What lessons can we learn from Jim Simons, the greatest quant trader of all time? My name is Mark from tradingform.com and in this video we're going to look at four lessons that you can learn from Jim Simons. We never believed our models reflected reality, just some aspects of reality. To put this quote into context, in 1998 a series of events around the world brought down the biggest and most famous quantitative hedge fund of its time. Now, This fund was called Long Term Capital Management and its spectacular rise and fall has been the subject of many books. In 1997, the Asian financial crisis and subsequent 1998 Russian debt default caused LTCM to implode. And at the time, it was seen as such a systemic problem that the New York Federal Reserve organised a bailout of LTCM's creditors and between them they injected nearly $4 billion to rescue the fund. Why this is significant, at the time many commentators were calling this the inevitable result of letting machines, letting algorithms in the financial markets making decisions, eventually they'll blow themselves and everybody else up. But of course subsequent history has proved this completely wrong and Renaissance along with many other firms have returned double digit returns annually for decades. So why was this prediction so spectacularly wrong? Well, one of the reasons is this quote that the sensible developers of these algorithms like Renaissance did not believe that their models reflected actual reality but only some aspects of it. And this is a common theme for all backtesters. How much truth is in this model that I have created? I've put in my historical data, I've put in my trading strategy. How much truth is there in this model? Well, I think that this quote illustrates the fact that even if the model, even if Renaissance have not got a model that reflects reality, there's not a lot of hope for the rest of us. However, just because the model does not reflect all of reality. It does not mean it is not useful. The gains on each trade were never huge and the fund only got it right a bit more than half the time. But that was more than enough. Bob Mercer, ex-CEO of Renaissance said possibly tongue-in-cheek but exposing some truth that he and his fund only needed to be right 50.75% of the time to make billions. Now this is a lesson not just for mechanical or algorithmic traders but for all traders that trading is almost always an accumulation of wins and losses and all that the only difference between Renaissance and all the rest of us is that they were able to do it, have a guaranteed edge and do it on an industrial, sta industrial scale, making thousands upon thousands of trades every single day. And this is one of the reasons, this is one of my theories as why many traders drop out, why it is so difficult to do in the long term, that it's hard to keep swinging, to use the baseball analogy, to keep swinging time and again and having losing trades. We all like the winning trades, but we're going to have plenty of losing trades. Goodness knows how many millions of losing trades Renaissance had but the accumulation of their winning trade paid all their costs and all their billions of dollars in terms of profit. Another factor, Renaissance were unrelentingly committed to execution. They took pride in hiding their trading activities from their competitors and disguising what they are up to. And we as retail traders, even small institutions, don't need to worry generally about people picking off our positions. 
don't have to worry about our trading size. But we do need to be ruthlessly focused on keeping down the cost that we can keep down and getting great execution, sticking to our entry rules and in particular sticking to our exit rules. And success is a useful reminder of the predictability of human behaviour. Renaissance studies the past because it is reasonably confident investors will make similar decisions in the future. We've all seen the disclaimer, past performance does not guarantee future results. Jesse Livermore, the most famous trader possibly of all time, said in the 1920s, there is nothing new on Wall Street. And he was right because human behavior does not change. And we are still, all of us, to a greater and lesser extent, subject to the same biases and blind spot that afflicted traders in the 1920s as it did traders in the 1820s. Simons, Jim Simons and Renaissance made their most money when precisely when markets were panicking. And they knew that this is when the humans, the human beings making those decisions on a collective grand scale were at their most irrational. This is when there is fear, Fear brings out the most irrationality, and so this is when making rational decisions pays off the most. Simon's phone call is a stark reminder of how difficult it can be to turn decision making over to computers. Now, what's the context of this quote? In January 2018, everybody who was there, it's not too long ago, remembers this. Equity markets were serene and going smoothly upwards as they had been for a good part of 2017. And they were so calm that many people were short volatility. And they used the VIX, they used ETFs and other ways to, sh to short volatility, predicting that these calm markets will continue. However, in early 2018, in early February 2018, volatility came back with a vengeance. And worse was to come. This was a choppy year 2018 and it ended on a very bad note. And markets had been falling for three months. S&P 500 was down 20% by this time. And Jim Simons picks up the phone to his financial advisor. This is a man who is widely credited as creating algorithmic as quantitative trading industry he picks up the phone to his financial advisor and says shall we go short in other words override the algorithms and put a hedge in and go short and this was near the bottom of the market so even this great man in terms of what he has done for quantitative trading is subject to similar biases that we are. And this is not the only occasion that is noted in Gregory Zuckerman's book, The Man Who Solved the Markets, happens on numerous occasions. And what's the takeaway from this? Well, partly it's a psychological one in that we as traders cannot be too strict on ourselves. Yes, we have our systems. Yes, we have our processes. But if we make a mistake, Arguably, Jim Simons made a mistake with his phone call. He was driven by emotion. If we make that mistake, we need to just put it out of our mind and carry on. Anybody can do this. Anybody in the world is subject to these instincts. We can control them, but sometimes they may still get out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to this channel for more content like this about quantitative trading, about learning to trade the financial markets. And if you want more information about trading the financial markets, please go to tradeinformed.com.